grid mode, hexadecimal, and unformatted. Yeah. Okay. And in uh, uh, new, new version, we have tree mode option. So it will be uh, the data will be shown in a hierarchical mode. So there will be plus icons. So if you expand the plus icon, then the uh, lower order data will be shown. Okay. Yeah, you were about to ask him question. Yeah, I was seeing one option there that uh, one record per row or one record per column. I think that's a transpose, like columns become rows and rows become columns, something like that. Yep. Yes, yes, if you can pivot the rows. Yeah. <clears throat> and you can, I, I think yep. you have a pivot option in the buttons enabled after viewing the data, I guess. And you have refresh button also, it will refresh after multiple executions of the graph. And if you want to save the data to any Excel, you can export it. Okay. Those options are there. I, so I already see like in export it is a tab delimited file. Yeah, yes, I think. Uh, so you are not able to change any options, only you have tab delimited file. Tab, tab delimited text or uh, all files, so no other option is there. Yeah, yeah yes. So uh, when I started out, right, I actually started with 1.13 version. So okay. I didn't work with this 1.10 version. Okay. So maybe in 1.13 version I had Excel file because now uh, obviously we have the Excel files options also. I think we have multiple options to export. Okay. Yeah. So. So the things you will not be needing, but I'm just uh, informing you. So you yeah, yeah. have these multiple options. If in case, if you really need that one, you can use it. Okay. And so through input files, what kind of data can be described? So there are both fixed size and variable length data types. You can use fixed length delimiters. Fixed sizes or uh, variable length delimiters. And right. your ASCII, EBCDIC, Unicode character sets are supported. So if you are reading the data from a mainframe source, so probably you, you will be using these kind of character sets before your uh, actual data. So it will be like UTF-8 string or <coughs> uh, one more character. Uh, in code something. So those character sets will uh, prefix your uh, data type actually. Okay. So before your string or de decimal, you will be giving this EBCDIC and the UTF-8. So those kind of uh, character sets are also supported. And we can have the usual strings, numbers, pack decimals, dates, etc. Complex data formats like vectors and nested record fields are also supported. Okay. <clears throat> so vectors are nothing but uh, arrays in programming languages and your nested records that will be similar to your uh, structures in programming languages. Okay. So let me give you one example. You are able to see the notepad screen, right? Yes, yeah, yes. Hello, Ashish? Yeah, I think you, you lost power or something. Yeah, yes. Okay. One second, I'll open. Yeah. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. <clears throat>
So this particular DML has both vector columns as well as record data type. Right. So this phone column, so for this, for one particular record, I can have and five and phone numbers. Five, five phone numbers. So means okay. we did, so okay. it's length. Yeah, yeah, got it. You got it, right? Yep. And uh, we have <coughs> one address field which is a record field so within that address field I can have city and pin ok and one question can this yeah. address field be a vector yeah yes it can be so we will be specifying here so ok got it so it will be a vector of records right so like the file will have city pin city pin city pin yes yes absolutely and I think and you will not be able to use uh, generate records to uh, generate sample data for a vector and uh, uh, record fields but in your uh, real time project scenarios like you will be getting if you are getting vector fields then you have to use vector data types in your DMLs. But at least if I create my own file with data in it I can use it right? Yeah, yes. And uh, like Karthik, one question. Uh, is yeah. record, within the record also supported? Like just like we have this DML which is record and uh, we have another record. Can we have another record within that address field? Yeah, yes. M multiple nested records are also supported. Okay. So access to field characteristics, it is done through the attributes pane. So we have the attributes pane option in the grid view editor. So we can use that to specify the ex extra field characteristics. Karthik, uh, since we were talking about the DML, I have one question. Yeah, yes. How many times uh, the re incoming records have a header a, and a footer record and some detailed records, right? So the record structure basically differs between the header, detail and trailer records. So do we have a provision of having like three different record formats for the same file or something? No. So if you are uh, having header and footer records, so in that case you have to read the entire file using a single data type and then in the transformation you have to drop the header and footer records if you do not want them or if you want it uh, for further uh, transformations you can just separate the detailed records from the header and footers okay so those kind of stuff we have to do in the transformations okay and okay. to answer your question we don't have really three kinds of data formats to read a particular data okay so in if in case you are not able to read the particular file, so what you can do is you can read it with a single field data type like this. So it will be like a read entire thing. Data, something like this. Okay. So your data column will contain all the records. So after that, once you get the data into the Abinitio, you can just view the data, how it looks, and then you can decide what can be done. Okay. Got it. It's basically similar to the way I program in COBOL. Okay, okay. So I got the concept. Not a problem. Okay, and even we have uh, COBOL to DML utilities also. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm not uh, very specific in COBOL, but I have seen the generate DML utility which uh, transfers this 
cobalt some file will be there i'm not sure into dml utility okay uh, is there any record format file in cobalt it must be some kind of uh, copy book or a data structure that yeah, yeah, that one that one that copy book cpy file right yep yep that file so that file can be used to create the dml okay so so actually what is the copy book it is a specification about the data or it is the original data file it is basically a data structure within cobo nothing else okay so that can be used to create the dml but when we have that information abinisho can read the data and convert that particular data into a dml structure so you can read it in a okay. okay so so this kind of a third party collaboration is there in, so you can use it with uh, cobol and uh, multiple so whatever you can use the input structures so those kind of options will be there suppose if you are reading the xml file you can use the xst document to create the dml okay so those kind of things there <coughs> so input file is over let's discuss about the output file it is similar to the input file except it has the port at left end so it has one input port and it can it can be used to create a serial file or a multi file there are no parameters as such so the usage is specify the output file name along with its absolute path layout and the dml to write the data in the input and one more thing i want to specify is when you open the properties mm -hmm. you can see the label option where you can change the labels yep and uh, you can see the file type here input output intermediate or lookup currently it is selected as output so if you want to change so what are they and uh, how do we use it and uh, under what circumstances we will be using it so let's discuss about phases now phase is a stage of a graph that runs to completion before the start of the next phase um uh, okay so if i tell you like uh, it will run to completion before the start of the next phase that is ideally dependent on us whether we are setting all the components in a single phase or we are making the components execute phase by phase right so every component by default will be in zeroth phase that means all the components will start at the same time right and if its execution is dependent upon other components it will wait otherwise it will start its own execution and if we really want to limit the number of components which are executing at the same time and we want to limit the uh, memory consumption we can use the phases to uh, to limit our memory consumption and resource consumption okay okay so so it is given here by by dividing the graph into phases we can utilize the resources like memory disk space and cpu cycle okay so mm -hmm. the boundary between two phases is called a phase break and it belongs to the first of the two phases so a phase break is something where the phase breaks into the next phase and uh, when there is a phase break actually the component immediately before a phase break it writes all the data passing through it into temporary files okay in the layout of the component immediately after the phase so when the first phase finishes running the components after the phase break read these temporary files to begin the next phase okay okay so there are <coughs> So there is a catch here. Why are we writing these temporary files after each phase break? Uh, otherwise, how how do we ensure that uh, all the data has been written? Like, if we use memory for it, it will be a big deal, right? It could be GBs. Yes, correct. So instead of using the RAM, it is using the disk to write the temporary files. Right. Uh, so. Um, okay it is partly correct and uh, uh, the main usage is for recovery 
So in any case, your graph, suppose we are having your width uh, graph and we are having five phases. Okay. Uh, so your graph has completed two phases and it has failed during the third phase. Okay. And so when you are rerunning the graph, you don't want to start the graph from the first phase. Right. Because it is already completed. So if you have that recovery information, you can actually run from the completed phase. So basically you can execute from where the failure has occurred. And how do we do so that? For, so for that particular point, the phase and checkpoints are useful. And uh, I don't know whether you have noticed or not, if you have ever had a graph failure, and if you have multiple phases, your uh, Abinishu will ask you whether you want to uh, remove the entire job and start afresh or you continue or you want to continue from the last error point. So it will actually continue from the last completed checkpoint. Okay. Okay. <laughs> on one side said like on the region and you can start it from the end or a particular temporary file screen mm -hmm. uh, in three different phases, three, three different areas. Suppose if the graph has failed after the phase 2, your, fi your file will be having the information after phase 2. Like if you have uh, deleted some records or you have inserted some records, those kind of information will be available in the phase 2, after phase 2. And if you do not want it, you can always set it in the properties of the file like whether you want a file to be remain intact in case of failure or you want to leave it to the default uh, thing like uh, after each checkpoint the effects whatever which I have done after the execution can be committed or not. So okay. this particular thing you can control. And the checkpoint is basically denoted by a simple bar on the flow, right? Yeah, correct. There, because having checkpoint is a costly affair. Like uh, when you have a checkpoint, Abinishu actually does extra job. It mm -hmm. saves the recovery information into the disk. Okay. If it is for if it is for a small number of data, it is okay. But if it is if in real time scenario, if you have multiple checkpoints in your graph, mm -hmm. that will actually have some effect on the performance. So you have to use your phases and checkpoints judiciously so that your graph's performance will not be affected. Okay. So Abinishio will not warn you about the usage of phases and checkpoints. You can have n number of phases and checkpoints. Okay. It doesn't really care about having uh, a particular limit to the number of checkpoints. But it is upon you to create that particular limit because it will have a toll on that particular graph's performance and your storage of code. Which one? I didn't hear you properly. Uh, I'm asking, like, are there any performance monitoring tools within Ebenezer? No, no. Okay. No performance monitoring tools as such. But uh, we have to, uh, 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 have to see. So based on the graph's execution time or uh, in the GD window what we can see so based on that we have to decide upon performance like which component should be used okay so next topic is proper facing so when should we increase the face of a particular component so here I have shown one example that we are reading from a file reformatting the data and then putting it into an output file and we are reading the same output file again in the second branch. So if you do, and we have the last option, don't roll back file if job fails. You don't want, you, you want the file to remain intact. So those kind of stuff we can do here. Okay. So by default it will be delete and recreate. Okay. And in the file protection, what is this execute? So execute permission, uh, is the one we need to execute that particular object. 
So in Unix world, you don't need execute permission for files. So if it is an executable uh, script, like if it is a script, like KSH script, mm -hmm. you have only read and write permissions. You cannot execute that particular script. You need execute permissions to run that particular script. Okay. So in file uh, scenario, I think it will not be needed. So execute. And uh, for directories, you need execute permissions to go in. Okay. So if you do not have execute permission on a particular, so these kind of options we can set in the output file. Next is port step. Port step is similar to whatever we have seen. So that's okay. Configuring the data set. So how do we want to specify an input file? We can specify the path name directly or we can use the browse option here. Mm -hmm. We can, so it will open up the select file uh, window where you can browse and select the particular data file which you have created already. So next is intermediate file. So it is also located in the data set. So it can represent a serial file or a multi file. So it has no any other parameters. How to use it? You have to specify the file name along with its absolute path. So intermediate file is the main usage is when we want to see the intermediate results during a graph execution. Right. Suppose, so if you are trying to read uh, I think you are talking about the read consistency in Oracle. In database it is handled in a different way using the undo table spaces. But here that possibility is not there in Unix file system. I think so. So that's why we have this facing concept. So you cannot read and write into the same file in the same place. Okay. But in Oracle using this undo table space I guess. So so when you are uh, writing data into an oracle table or you are updating and editing and you still have a lock in it, you didn't commit the transaction and whenever I try to view the data, it will give me the last committed data. So it will not get me the updated data what you have done. So that data is available in my undo table space. So it will be actually uh, one more copy. So when you are uh, committed So let's discuss, let's see about the filter by expression component. So as the name suggests, filter by expression lets you filter the input records, whatever that is fed into this component with the usage of an expression. So your DML expression or a transform function can specify a filter condition and based upon that condition, your records will be filtered. Mm -hmm. And it can also be used to select a certain percentage of records or to select every nth record based on the condition you specify. So if the particular parameter select underscore expression, so that's the parameter we use to specify our filter condition. If it returns true or one, then the input record will be passed to the output port. Else the record will be sent to the deselect port. Option and this deselect port is optional. Whether we want to have the deselected records or not, it is up to you. We don't need to connect a flow to the deselect port. Right. If you really want the uh, filter records, you can use the deselect port to collect the output. Okay. So these are the ports available and we have reject error and log ports also. Which are diagnostic ports, which will give you more information about the rejection. So, how do we specify the filter by expression filters? Like, this. suppose we have an employee information coming up, and we want to filter the data by location. So, it will be specified like this: in dot city equal to equal to Chennai. So, in this case, all the records which have the city column as Chennai will be sent to the output port 
and other records will be sent to the e-select mode. You can combine multiple conditions also using the logical operators and or all those operators are available. Actually, you can see the available operators and functions in the expression editor. I think you must have gone through the expression editor window. Right? No. Yesterday I have shown you. I don't recall it. Uh, okay, so when we clicked on the edit transform rules option, we got one small window where we selected the uh, count function and then the field name also, right? When right. we are trying to roll with the roller. So right. that window is called expression editor. Okay. So in that expression editor, if you, so because, and, and uh, so you can see the window names on the top of that particular window. Okay. So at first, uh, it will be tough to recall, so you just remember whenever you, uh, the Abiniso opens a window and later once you get used to it, so it will be easier. So in that expressionator window, left side you will have the columns and in the middle you will have the functions, on the right side you can see the operators. Okay. So all your arithmetic operators, logical operators, uh, bitwise operators, so and uh, what is it? Mathematical functions, all funct all the available functions are supported in Abinitio. So you can use the supported functions here in your in all your expressions, and uh, you can have multiple conditions uh, using and or or, and you can use your if statements also if else else if those are also supported. So if you want to filter two conditions, so in that case you have to use in dot city equal to equal to Chennai or in dot city equal to equal to Bangalore. So you need to use double equal to to check the uh, equality condition. You should not use single equal to. Single equal to stands here for assignment operator. Okay. So will that also be in the filter component? Yeah, yes. So actually using the filter component is depending upon the requirement. So for in 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 terms of the filter component, it needs an expression which gives result of 1 or 0. So anything that gives a result as 1 or 0 can be used in the filter expression. So what, whenever it returns 1, whenever your particular expression returns 1, the record will be sent to the output port. Whenever it returns 0, the record will be sent to the deselect port. That's the only requirement for filter expression. The usage of expression is dependent on you, whether you want to look up some data or you want to uh, use some input uh, uh, built-in functions. It is really dependent on you. So since, you, since you have asked two requirements, I have given you. Whether we want to filter based upon city, you can directly use the first one. If you want to look up the particular city in a list of cities, you have to use the second one. Okay. And Is it clear? Thing. There are different ways you can code it. So you can choose whatever way you want. So by looking at this particular function, you can actually reduce what it is doing. Okay. Right? So if in dot city and uh, whenever I wrote, I'm writing this in dot city, it corresponds to the incoming uh, field value. Since it is coming in the input port, it will come as in dot city. You cannot directly use city, even though the field name is city. You have to uh, prefix it with the input port, the port that is coming from. Otherwise, Abinishu will not be able to understand. Uh, this city. It will actually consider this city as a variable and it will ask you like variable city not found. If you prefix it with the correct code, it will understand that city is coming from the input code. That's why we are using this in dot out dot everything here. Okay? Yep. This, this is one more thing. So that I think I don't think number is available in the lower version. But uh, otherwise, if it is not available, then we have to join the conditions here, or, or, or. Okay. So, and uh, we should not use like this. In that city equal to equal to 
ये और एक्सप्रेशन ऑल्सो बी अपील Yeah, yes, yes, it can, it can be done. It can be done. So, you, so you can use whatever fields and expressions you want, and the end result should be one or zero. So, when you, when I said like this will not work, Abhinsho is not able to deduce an expression result out of this expression. So, in that case, it will throw an error. Got it. If it is like uh, a single variable, one, it will actually allow you. No, I didn't get it. Okay, so when you see this expression, uh, if you give this particular expression in your expression field, when we are having a Chennai city record, this particular expression, this particular part of the expression will return one. Correct? Right. Boolean one. And here. Here it will return zero because it is a Chennai record. Right. Let's consider. Let's remove this. So, so our our output how it will be reduced is one or zero. So and the final output it will return. Sorry. Final output it will return as one. So one or zero is one. So since we are uh, so since we are getting the output as one, we are getting that. record in the output field right and for this also the same condition if our city is a a result will be 1 or 1 again so the output will be 1 so it will actually send the output record so it is, it is actually similar to without having this right there is no need for this if you are having a or condition and then having a 1 that means everything is true there this is actually right. similar to without having it right Like why 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 does Abhinsh allow it to? I'm just saying. So whatever conditions you can specify, but okay. if you are specifying it in parts, then it should also uh, return a valid result. Okay, that's my point actually. So if, so consider this case when we are looking up a list of files. So this lookup underscore match function is an inbuilt function which will look up the particular file. For the incoming field name using the key, actually the lookup file will be predefined with the key as city. So here we are using the incoming records to look up this DDST file using the key field called city. So whenever our particular city exists in that lookup file, lookup underscore match will return one. So in that case, our output our record will be sent to the output. We'll see about lookup functions later. So since you have asked, I just have given you this particular yeah, yeah. point. It will change only the record format. It will not actually work on the particular data. Okay. Basically, yeah. like uh, Aaron. So whatever, yeah, whatever redefined format can do, that can be done in said reformat. Okay. So important parameters that are available in reformat are count, transform. and select so transform is the parameter where we specify our mapping rules count it accepts an integer from 1 to 20 which is used to increase the output port so default value for the count is 1 so when you increase the count it will actually increase the number of output ports and you will get one more transform parameter also so basically the idea is reformat can work on the same data and it can give you multiple outputs okay like for one you, file, uh, you want, uh, yes we can gaps and one file you wanted to put or okay or one file exactly you exactly you can do multiple transformations and you can uh, redirect the output to separate flows 
So in no. that case, you will be using the count and uh, multiple transforms. No. And uh, you have one more parameter called select that is optional. That will uh, actually work as a filter and this filter will be applied before your transform. Okay. So instead of having input file filter by expression reformat, you can use input file reformat with the select parameter. And we have to keep in mind that the filter will be applied before the transform. Basically a combination of uh, reformat without the select, like a filter by and then reformat. Yes, exactly. So here I have a window which shows uh, the increase in the count variable. So you can see the increase in the number of output variable, output ports. I have the counters too, so the output ports will be increased. Yeah. And you can see the transform parameters are also increased. Since the filter is applied before the reformer, it will be only one. It yeah. will not be increased. So all the records will be filtered. And the filtered output will be sent to the uh, <coughs> transform parameters. And uh, or the difference between using a filter by expression component and using the select is we will not be able to collect the deselect output here. When we want the deselect output you have to explicitly use the filter by expression component. Okay. Yeah. I think you are familiar <coughs> with this screen. Yep. I will let you know what are the important components here. So left side we have the source fields, right side we have target fields, in the middle we will be having the transformation pools. We can just drag and drop from left side to right side. So initially this will be empty and if you want the output fields to appear here before you start this transform, you can go to the ports and you can specify the output format there and after that if you come to record format definition that is this transform parameter you will you can see the output ports here. Okay. Since we haven't specified the output DML the fields will not be visible. If you specify it your fields will be visible here. You can just drag and drop the output here. Or you can just type here and you can extend it to the output fields. Okay, that's all about the reformat uh, component. I do have some case studies for you. I will send this via email. So before that, I will give you a walkthrough of it. So you can tell me like if you have any doubts or this. So first case study, create an employee file using the following DML, generate two output files having male and female associate records. Right, so you filter by select and deselect. Yes, so create an input file with the gender column and uh, uh, generate two output files from that particular input file yeah. with one having male and other having female. Yeah. This is fine, right? Yeah. The second one is use the same input file, transform the input data and store the output in another file using the output DML. So your input DML is like this. I want the data to be transformed into this. So we have first name and last name here. I want name column which is the concatenation of first and last names using comma. And second one is total salary. I have to add a 25 percentage of the salary column with salary and then I have to sum up and the final amount should be there in total salary. This is fine, right? 